And what a big fighter Ding Liren is. After losing the first round of the tournament to Wang Hao and the second one to MVL, he was facing Fabiano Caruana, the informed top seed of the candidates 2020. Well, Ding Liren could have, you know, played with the white pieces, played it carefully, but being the champion that he is, he went there, he played uncompromising chess and he beat Caruana. This is what champions are made up of. They believe in themselves even after their losses. And this is what we are going to witness in today's game. So Ding Liren with the white pieces playing against Caruana opened the game with 1 d4. d5, c4, c6. It was the slough. Knight f3, knight f6, knight c3 and here d into c4 a4 and bishop f5 here white has two options one is to play e3 which is more solid in nature but Ding Liren went knight to e5 black uh, at his part has now knight bd7 move which is the which is one possibility but he played e6 this is all played several times and now f3 White wants to play e4 and tell black that you know you taking on c4 was not a good idea. Black plays bishop b4 and all this is very well known. Everyone knows that if white plays e4 here then you can simply take on e4. Fe. Knight e4. And uh, bd2. I myself have played this system with uh, white pieces, knight e4, queen e4, queen e2, takes, king d2, check, king c2, knight a6 and white has an extra piece but black has right now 4 pawns, he will lose one of the pawns here. So 3 pawns for a piece and leads to very interesting struggle. But you know this has been well analyzed and white players have decided that maybe this is not the way to go so ding played the move uh, here knight takes c4 i must mention that i was at the world rapid and blitz and with it played the move king f2 here against bartel and he was in for a surprise because bartel went bishop c2 this is a very recurring theme when you place your king on f2 because if you take the bishop, queen d4 check and you lose the knight. So uh, with it played queen d2 here but after bishop b3 the bishop is well placed defending the b3, uh, c4 pawn and black got a clear advantage here. So Ding Liren doesn't fall for this trick. He plays knight to c4 first, takes the pawn and after castles he now plays king f2. And the idea of king f2 is that now you can play e4 when all these sacrifices are not going to work the king is well placed on f2 so black must do something quite uh, you know he has to do something quickly so c5 is what had been played you know you need to break in the center so after e4 eh, the position goes on but this is how games had gone but Karuana, you know, he took exactly 10 seconds for his next move and played the move e5. And this was really a surprising move. He caught off the chair and I think Ding Liren would have been quite shocked. You know, he is not a person to show any expressions. But uh, when, when your opponent makes a move like this, you begin to wonder what exactly should be my approach. Should I go aggressively try to refute this idea? Or should I just find a middle path where maybe white can keep a small edge but not take any risks? Well, if you know Ding Liren, then he is the person who will play uncompromising chess. He will look for uh, the refutation of the variation. It's not just like that that he became world number three. So he took with knight into e5. I think if he wanted to play more solidly, he could have taken with the pawn. And then uh, mostly Caruana would have played knight fd7 because exchanging the queens I think uh, leads to a very small but steady advantage for white. He's pawn up and his pieces are well placed. So knight fd7 and here um, bishop f4 check g3 queen goes back e4 bishop e6 
and king g2 and now after take take knight e5 black has recovered the pawn but white has the bishop pair and uh, after bishop e2 a small edge so maybe ding leven would have seen this variation and said i can play this without any risk but well he wanted to beat karuana so he took with the knight and asked fabi what do you want to do so karuana of course had his reply ready bishop c2 and uh, now of course taking this would mean that black has equalized no issues here so ding is going to play queen d2 and now karuana played c5 once again white is at crossroads what would you do here try to think for yourself uh, in such a position what what are the possibilities so clearly white has two possible moves one is d5 other one looks slightly passive but is very interesting the move e3 in the game d5 was played but if you play e3 uh, it comes with a threat because cd4 is not so great i can just take on c2 <coughs> and after dc dc i think uh, white is doing really well here pawn up has the bishop pair so maybe after e3 this bishop has to be saved could go back to g6 could also go to uh, b3 let's say b bishop b3 gives an additional option of knight d3 now uh, cd can be met with knight takes b4 so these are all the possibilities in the position and i'm sure that if this move is going to be played again then e3 can be uh, looked into but d5 uh, looked most natural you get a passed pawn and uh, you continue the game here fabi played bishop b3 he could have tried for bishop e4 which was an interesting move uh, you cannot take this bishop because of knight e4 and you lose the queen this knight here is pinned as you can see but i think uh, white has a strong move here g4 uh, and uh, ding would have found this i guess over the board again it's very messy here for example if we, i play rook e8 then after knight f7 takes g5 black can jump with knight g4 so you can see how many lines uh, white has to uh, think over the board if he is not prepared but it turns out white is doing okay so bishop b3 was played and now e4 so this structure is actually very very solid it kind of blocks all of black's pieces but on the flip side any of these pawns actually are uh, prone to get hit upon so for example in many of the lines black can sacrifice knight e4 or knight d5 and then suddenly this king on f2 starts feeling vulnerable i'll just give you an example for example rook e8 and now if you go knight d3 which looks like a normal move what does black play rook takes e4 and this is how black get, gets back his pawn and then now everything starts looking very very weird for white you can't take back and uh, although the material is even what is the king doing here this is a weak pawn so white has to be careful in this respect again ding leven played the most uh, the best move in the position he played queen f4 defending the knight and just try to think with black how to create play you are a pawn down what should you do here for example you could think about uh, knight h5 here this is a move but then you see that f7 is hanging so can't do that if you develop your knight you can just get exchanged so how do you create something sacrifice another pawn this is what karuana did he played c4 and now is threatening bishop d6 pinning this knight so ding took with the knight if he instead took with the bishop it's a very nice variation because now just look at this this bishop is attacking the one on b3 black goes bd6 and attacks this knight over here so white says i will just move my queen <laughs> no one is defending anything because if you take this i can take back with the knight on c4 if you take bishop e5 i will take bishop b3 uh and the main idea is of course that if you take bishop b3 here queen b6 is just killing because after queen into b3 the e5 knight is also hanging so queen e3 is kind of stopping these checks 
and now knight b d7. <coughs> Again, uh, crazy complications. If you now take this guy here, then I can take the bishop here, or even I can play knight d7 because if this bishop is taken, bishop c5 is coming, and there is this. Uh, here bishop b3 and now not knight into e5 because then you are just two pawns down but bishop c5 knight d3 and you reach such a position where white has two pawns and two pieces for the queen and very good compensation just giving you an idea of how the lines can be okay knight c4 is the best move no need to take with the bishop and now knight bd7 so karuana tells ding Look, you are two pawns up, but this knight is a little bit loose. This king is not so well. Your, what's your queen doing on f4? And I'm going to sacrifice one piece on one of these squares. So Ding is under a lot of pressure. He must find the accurate moves and believe it or not, he was already had used close to an hour while Fabi had used no time. He had complete time on the clock. By the way, if you can hear some music in the background, pardon me, there's some wedding or procession going on. Okay, bishop e3, the most natural and the strongest move in the position. Ding Liren is playing like a machine. And now came the move knight to f8. Again, a nice move, create continuously creating some threats. Knight is going to come to g6 uh, and this queen is feeling a little bit uncomfortable on f4. Bd4, nice move by Ding. He clears a square for his queen to come back. And then after knight g6 here, what should uh, white play is the question. Well, white could play uh, queen c1 and this is the best move in the position. If you play a move like queen d2, then you have to be ready for takes, takes and rook e4. These tactics are always in the air. But queen c1 was a good move because, well, you don't want to keep your queen here. It's safe. Uh, but you think that, okay, after rook c8, you don't know what's happening. But knight d2, knight e4, fe, bishop d5, good move. Uh, and if you take, then queen h4, and you pick up this guy here. But now white can play queen d1 and somehow he's surviving in this position. Uh, white is a piece up and should convert this. But it's, uh, you know, visually black has some very nice pieces on the board. So it will be not so easy to uh, convert it. But queen c1 is the computer move and I think Karuana felt that his opponent cannot find such a move. So queen f5 was played by Ding. And this is the first place where Pabi actually thought for quite some time and took on c4, bishop c4. I was also analyzing rook c8 and I just want to give you one sample line. So for example, knight c3, uh, sorry, knight e3, bishop c5. Uh, exchanging the dark squared bishop is a good idea because then all the dark squares in the position are slightly more weak. Takes, rook takes. And here I thought to myself that, okay, white can, you know, make many moves. He can play perhaps uh, rook a3 or try for g3 or so. But let's imagine that it's black's move here. How can black take advantage of this setup? And look at this move, rook to e5. So pushing the queen back. And now what does black play? Bishop d5. And this shows the strength in black's position. You know what? black is capable of because after knight c d5 let's say you take with the e pawn and already queen b6 is very strong i think black is uh, in white is in big trouble so knight c d5 you take this guy and now if ed then you can even take rook into e3 and a queen b6 is coming and it's all over uh, but if knight d5, then you take rook d5, takes queen b6, and this is exactly what the worst that can happen to white. Okay, so ding must be careful. Takes with the bishop, queen c7, attacking the bishop here, 
king says okay i just save my queen and here after bishop c5 white 2 and fabi thought for quite some time here i think uh, he he thought for nearly he took uh, queen c5 he thought for 14 minutes i think uh, he was thinking about rook e5 and this is really an interesting move because after queen h3 you have knight f4 you can even take on c5 by the way but knight f4 just showing you a line queen h4 g5 and now if you go here then i can now take and the queen is somehow misplaced there so you know sacks on uh, d5 are absolutely in the air so white can try for something very interesting here he can take on f4 and play bd4 and these are the positions that white should aim for because once he sacrifices the queen he has two pieces for the queen and two central pawns with a safe king and the rooks coming into the center should be fine for white fabi took on c5 king f1 and now i don't know what happened to him he just played this move h6 in within a minute why did he do this very unclear to me because he could have continued rook e5 queen h3 queen b4 attacking the b2 pawn and after rook b1 play knight f4 you can see how his pieces are flowing in knight h5 queen f2 f5 and this is how he would have got plenty of counter play here i think black is doing okay uh, and this would have made the game very interesting but once h6 was played ding was very confident he brought his rook to the center and now instead of passively defending rook b1 he can now defend b2 pawn from d2 that's exactly what happened rook d2 queen e3 rook c2 and now if the sacrifices on d5 are not going to work and e4 then white has a simple plan of like coming like this back with his queen then playing g3 king g2 and winning the game with two extra pawns and now you can see even white is creating threats for example if rook c8 here then knight d1 and you lose the rook here so a6 was played he wants to play b5 b4 queen h3 nice move b5 queen g3 this is what ding wants to do b4 knight d1 and now at the cost of one pawn on a4 he has been able to coordinate everything now nicely next g3 king g2 is coming up so queen d7 to at least meet g3 with queen h h3 check g3 was played nonetheless queen h3 king g1 a5 queen d4 nicely centralizing the queen knight h5 knight f2 and now this is rest is simple for ding because he played f4 he's up not afraid of any ghosts if if fabi has to go back to f6 then that's just horrible you know you can even push on with e5 uh, so he sacked on f4 but this is not going to be enough against a player like ding uh, king f1 queen d6 rook g1 activating all his pieces bishop b5 b3 stopping it rook c2 knight e6 queen e3 and after a few moves white is now a complete piece up so uh, ding managed to win and take home the full point so a great game for the chinese player he is now one out of three but i really loved how karuana tried his best in this game prepared a novelty which has never you know this move has never been played before it's a shocking novelty e5 and ding said no i'm going to refute your opening i'm not going to be afraid of you he took e5 and then you know all these moves which were so strong queen f4 he took the another pawn uh, but maybe or even after playing the best moves i think queen c1 here is the best move but even after making so many good moves karuana did have his chances which just shows how rich chess is and how compensation can be perceived differently by uh, different engines and different players so i would recommend you to study this game further in depth and and try to understand uh, improve your understanding of chess i hope you like this game and perhaps for all ding liren fans out there his chances of making it to the world championship are not over you know if you can beat fabiano you can win this event this is sagar shah signing off thank you